Okay, this how-to video is going to talk about um, how to use the DFM wizard that's available inside the Cadence BCB tools. So Cadence introduced um, some DFM checks by default into the Cadence BCB tools a while ago. Um, and this wizard allows you to effectively import a default set of rules um, supplied by Cadence or other vendors into the tools. If we go to Constraint Manager, so Setup and Constraints, you'll see obviously there's a there's a manufacturing worksheet and under here you've got design for fabrication, design for assembly and design for test rules. Um, and these can be, you know, your outlines, your masks, your annular ring checks, your silk screen checks, paste mask, uh, component spacing, component outlines, test test points to outlines, test points to silk screen and solder mask, etc. So lots and lots of different rules for you to go and define and Normally, this is the sort of thing that your your PCB fabricator may uh, be able to help you with. So, I'll we'll start off. If we go to um, a browser, there's actually a, a, a really useful page you can go to that Cadence have configured. It's on uh, pcb.cadence.com forward slash dfm underscore customer forward slash sign in, um, and allows you to join join the Design True DFM Partner Program. Um, you can use your COS Cadence Online Support account to access this website. Um, and there's a list of some default um, PCB fabricators. These are supplying data, so you can actually um, request data from them uh, based on a specific stack up that you're going to do, the technology files that you're going to use. And they would then, um, some of them will email you data or, or files that you can then import into the, using the wizard. Cadence do supply a default set of rules though. So um, if we actually just close uh, Constraint Manager, if we go to the setup and the design through DFM wizard, I've got a wizard that will allow me to import these files. So we're going to start off um, through the, the, the default sets. So this is telling me that I've got four stack ups based in the cross section. So I've got a primary section, which is a six layer board. I've got three flexi sections, which are uh, the two inner layers. So inner layer one and inner layer two of the PCB. And then I've got some stiffeners, a flexi stiffener and LCD stiffener. This is the flexi stiffener with the, the sti piece of stiffener on the bottom of the flexi. This is an LCD stiffener with a, a stiffer on the top of the flexi, hence the reason the difference difference. We then need to define um, a stack up type for each uh, stack up name. So obviously the primary section would be a rigid section, the flexi would be a flex, the stiffeners are also going to be flexies, so we'll uh, define both of those. I've then got a default set of rules, so the ones that Cadence provide are stored in the installation folder, so C Cadence 17.4 and then it's share PCB DFM DT underscore wizard, and then there's some, some files there that you can actually use. You can also browse to any files that you get via the partner program and import them this way. We'll click on next. It then specifies the number of rules that it's going to generate. So 120 outline rules, 40 annular check rules, um, 15, 16 silk screen rules, etc. Um, it's also going to turn on the analysis modes um, and update the DRCs. So I'll, I'll cover this just after the wizard has finished, um, but it basically turns on the rule sets for you. We'll then click on finish. It then adds all the rules, turns the DRCs on, and you see straight away I'm getting some DRC errors. If we look under setup and constraint modes, this is effectively where all the rule sets are enabled or disabled. Not all the rule sets are turned on by default um, because we have quite a lot of rules here. So obviously the design for fabrication, I've got some outline rules that I can turn on and off. Um, the, the wizard has actually turned on all these de design for fabrication, design for assembly, design for test rules based on the rule sets. Um, you can get an indication of what each one is. If we actually hover over each rule set, there's a little eye at the end of each uh, each row name here, and you can see a, a graphical representation of what the DRC is um, that can give you an idea about what you're trying to do here and what the rule set does. So once you've got the rule sets defined, um, we need to start to investigate the DRC. So um, I'm going to start this off layer by layer. So I'm going to start off with my solder mask checks. I've got kind of 17,000 DRCs that I need to kind of look at. So maybe some of these rules are, are not quite right from the ones that Cadence have brought in based on my design technology. So let's have a look and see what's going on. So if we actually zoom in, we can actually see a, a DRC marker that we can hover over and get an idea of what's going on. So I've got an annular ring pin pad to mask DRC. Probably because my um, my solder mask in my design here is, is size for size based on the pad size. So if I turn on the pin as well, you'll see they're size for size. The rule set, so if you go back to Constraint Manager, and we'll look at the, uh, the annular ring check here. My uh, pad to mask, I've actually got a slightly smaller, so it's, it wants a smaller 
distance and obviously I've got size for size. So I can actually just adjust the default rule set here and based on the technology that I'm doing here, we'll get rid of that and sort out the pad to mask. We'll do the same for the vias as well. So I've got my vias are the same size as my, uh, my via mask is the same size. So once I do that and then minimize, we'll do an update DRC and that removes my DRCs down to, you know, 12, 12,000. I've still got a fair few to go and sort out, but by general, just by hovering over the DRC and correcting the error, you can actually see what's going on and resolve them. Um, so let's maybe just look at this one. So this one here is uh, my component to the outline. This is actually an overlap because I've got um, my, my package boundary is bigger. So this one I might have to consider waiving the DRC, but it's just a matter of looking at each DRC error as you go along and finding out.